Don't be afraid of sharks. Here are five things that you should actually be afraid of when you're scuba diving in the ocean. While scuba diving is one of the safest sports in the world, that is if it is done correctly. I make these videos so you know what to expect when you go on your next scuba diving adventure because I want you to be able to get back on the boat or onto shore after a beautiful dive falling in love with our incredible ocean. What should you be afraid of? The first thing that comes to mind is bad gear. Now bad gear doesn't mean it's not from the best brand, it doesn't look the coolest. Bad gear means a uh, gear that hasn't been properly taken care of. We got the tank, we got the first stage, we got the hose, we got the second stage. We got the BCD, we got the air hose on that. You need to make sure each of those components are working because if something goes wrong, that is where you can get into real trouble. Scuba was invented in a way to help us have a tank of air on our back and some first and second stages with a hose in between to change the high pressure inside the tank to ambient pressure where we're breathing. So as you can imagine, turning something that has 220 bar at the start of your dive into ambient pressure, which is the pressure wherever you are, so you can actually breathe through it, takes some technology. <laughs> imagine trying to breathe directly from a tank. Unfortunately, some places in the world, some people in the world don't properly service their gear. If you're buying secondhand gear, if you're going for a dive without properly testing it, it is possible that this gear will malfunction. In Australia, we have extremely strict, stringent safety standards. Every single regulator should be serviced at least once a year or after 100 dives. I'm not 100% sure on that one. Let me know what the number is down below. I don't think that's a legal requirement, but a recommendation. But our scuba tanks must be serviced once a year. They get a hydrostatic test and a visual inspection, which checks how much the aluminum or steel has moved in that time. And if there's give, meaning the structural integrity of the tank is not good enough to actually withstand the pressure also why it's really important to do your open water course, your paddy open water course properly and take the time to learn the skills and make sure you're comfortable releasing that air hose, knowing what to do in, a, in an emergency. Because even with gear that's properly serviced, bad things can possibly happen. I've had my air hose get stuck, meaning that the air from the tank was flowing into my BCD. My BCD was inflating and I was about to go into an, into an uncontrolled ascent. So what I had to do was quickly disconnect this and then purge all the air out of my BCD. But I wouldn't have known how to do that if I didn't do my open water course properly, my advance, and then practice it many times in my rescue course as well. The second thing you should be afraid of not necessarily afraid of, mindful of, is the current. Sometimes in areas around the world, such as Indonesia, there can be very strong currents that kind of pop out of nowhere. I have a friend who was diving along, having a great time. She was at about 15 to 20 meters of depth, diving along a wall, and I believe this was in Bali. Absolutely stunning, 20 meter visibility, gorgeous day. Suddenly, there was a strong current that started pulling them down. Now, these currents can occur without warning. So in this scenario, if she had not reacted, uh, she would have potentially been sucked down to extreme depths, which could have been extremely dangerous, whether that is for running out of air or or getting decompression sickness. So what she did in that case was grab a hold of the reef and kind of slowly start pulling herself up to the surface. She also inflated her BCD to help her with the buoyancy to get to the surface. After a couple of minutes, this current abated, so she was then able to make a normal ascent at the appropriate rate. So it is something you should just be aware of. So just make sure you listen to the safety breathing and be and be mindful that the ocean is an extremely beautiful and vast place that of course we need to protect, but it is also an unforgiving mistress. There is a reason that there are so many superstitions for people who go on boats like the banana one. Let me know if you know what I'm talking about. The third thing is a little bit less intense, but it is fire coral. Now, I thought when I heard the name fire coral, I was like, oh, it's no big deal. It just looks like fire, right? Well, I might have accidentally brushed it when my buoyancy wasn't quite right, which is an important skill to practice. Uh, I brushed against it with my ankle and I had little lumps, 
very itchy lumps on my ankle for about two weeks. Fire coral, just like many of the things in our ocean, is uh, very uh, poisonous, venomous, poisonous, poisonous to the touch. So as always, to be a good eco-conscious diver, make sure your buoyancy is good, you're staying away from the coral so you're not breaking it, and uh, yeah, just avoid touching anything underwater because there's many things in the ocean that are poisonous to you and can hurt you. And rather than the sharks or the lionfish, uh, maybe worry a little bit more about your buoyancy and getting a cut on a coral because those cuts get infected as well. Yeah, I got a really bad cut on my ankle when I kind of like stepped on some, uh, like on a rock and slipped in the ocean. There's a lot of bacteria in the ocean, so just don't touch stuff. Wear proper thermal protection, don't touch things underwater, and that will be good for the marine life and for you. The next thing is getting lost. This is another reason why it's so important to listen to the dive safety briefing and of course a lot of places you're going to be diving not only are you going to have a dive guide or a buddy or a map or a compass make sure you know how a compass works and how to use it uh, there might be a set up path but if there's not uh, make sure you don't swim too far in any particular direction without kind of keeping mind of where you're going it's so easy to get absolutely enthralled by the magic by the biodiversity in the underwater world and having a look at a little Nemo or this particular fire coral or anemone or seeing a horseshoe crab or a turtle that you suddenly uh, get a little bit disorientated about where the boat is. That's why it's important to know how to use your compass, know what your markings were along the way and know vaguely how many kick cycles did you do in that direction or how much time did you spend swimming in that direction and is it a safe area to potentially pop up and have a little bit of a look around uh, if you are unsure of where you are? I know I've certainly done a few swim up to the surface quick pop up to check the location of the boat. It might be a little embarrassing, but trust me, it's a much better outcome than getting lost and then having you know the boat search for you when you suddenly surfaced a kilometer away. Also, if you do get lost, make sure you listen to the dive safety briefings so you know the protocol of what you're meant to do in that scenario. We can talk about that in another video if you would like. It's also important that you have a good dive buddy. This doesn't mean that they're the best diver in the world, but it is important to be with someone you trust or at least have that conversation beforehand of your expectations of each other. It is always good to be within arm's length of your dive buddy, so in case of any emergency, whether it's an out of air scenario or you get touched by fire coral or you, know, you wanna show them the cool shark, you can just tap them on the shoulder and alert them to whatever is going on. We all know dive buddies that, you know, tend to swim a little bit further away or they get too distracted by their camera and kind of stare in a particular location. Or some people who really, for some reason, just want to follow that shark. Just come back here. Guys, we do diving with a buddy for a reason. It is the number one safety protocol. So I want you guys to be safe divers. And these are the things that you should be considering. But now that you've learned how to be a safe diver, of course, have a look at the next level of certification if you're curious about doing it. If you're open water, check out the advanced or rescue, or do you maybe wanna be a diving instructor? Uh, I'd highly recommend checking out what my days looked like when I did teach diving. Otherwise, I'll see you guys next time.